The Fonz may have started this trend, but it very much continues in television today. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 21st century jump the shark moments. We've got to rescue your son. And I've got to staple this to a seal. And I've skipped breakfast, so I'm off to Burger King. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at TV moments that aired from 2000 onward that seemed like desperate attempts for attention and that arguably signaled a major downhill turn for the series. Number 10. Agrestic Burns Down – Weeds This was not what I had in mind. Act of God, baby. Weeds had three fantastic seasons before being derailed by a misguided twist. When Nancy's actions inadvertently lead to Guillermo burning down a grow field, the fire spreads to the town of Majestic, including the Agrestic neighborhood in which the show takes place. This leads to the departure of several main characters for no real reason, and a series of desperate maneuvers to keep the cast together. The show was never able to find its footing again, bouncing around from setting to setting. We're on the run, aren't we? These are solid questions. We're going to Redmar. For a show that was meant to find comedy in a suburban mother dealing drugs, removing suburbs from the equation was a perplexing choice. Welcome to the border. <laughs> Number 9. Terrorists Hack the Vice President's Pacemaker – Homeland Let's set aside the fact that most pacemakers don't have Wi-Fi capability and that even if the VP's was, his security experts wouldn't leave it enabled. His pacemaker can be wirelessly accessed with that number. <laughs> I'm not. I won't do it. Yes, you will. This moment really hammed up a series that only one season earlier swept the Emmys. For a show that created tension from realistic political situations, this took the series' credibility to a sudden low from which it has never fully recovered. Later seasons have been met with a lukewarm reception from critics and audiences, and in hindsight, it's pretty easy to pinpoint this moment as the major turning point. Yes, there were still some high points in those later seasons, but this twist was funnier than it was dramatic. I'm killing you. <laughs> Number 8. Disaster Episodes – Desperate Housewives She tried to seduce my husband, so… She put the moves on your husband? Why didn't you say so? <laughs> There's no shortage of drama on Wisteria Lane, but these episodes take it to the extreme. In the third through seventh seasons, there was always an episode involving a disaster that would drastically shake up the storylines. Okay, you've made your choice. Here I come. Though these moments were a fun bit of ridiculousness, it was a bit of a stretch of the imagination for a disaster to hit every year, and they felt like a lazy way of killing off peripheral characters. These disasters included a shooting, a tornado, a fire, a plane crash, and a riot. Were these moments exciting? Sure. Did they feel desperately so? Absolutely. Stop it! Leave him alone! Leave him alone! Stop! He's my neighbor! Number 7. Still in Eric's Basement? That 70s Show. You know, who am I kidding? I wanted this. <laughs> Though That 70s Show was an ensemble comedy, it's hard to argue that the heart and soul of the show wasn't Eric. When Topher Grace left the series in the finale of its penultimate season, it left a hole in the show, which was only exacerbated by Ashton Kutcher's exit. So long, Point Place! The strangest thing about this departure, though, is that his friends still hung out in Eric's basement, even though he didn't live there anymore. Eric was replaced by Randy, who was despised by fans for being a bland imitation of our beloved dork. So you're not hiring? <sighs> That's a bummer, because I gotta say, if this is your idea of a staff meeting, I'd work my butt off! What's even weirder is that Donna would later date Randy and even hang out with him in Eric's basement. Wait, what? Oh, look at this! Donna and Randy kissing! Woohoo! <laughs> well, I guess I shouldn't get too upset because, after all, it's none of my business what two people do in the privacy of my own driveway. Number 6. Walden Schmidt, Two and a Half Men. Ashton Kutcher exiting a show may have caused problems, but his entrance on another show was even worse. Everybody knows about Charlie Sheen's very public meltdown, which led to his firing from this ultra-successful sitcom. I know what you said you wanted, but I really don't think Pamela Anderson will agree to swallow your ashes. Enter Kelso himself, who played billionaire Walden Schmidt. Oh, by the way, I'm Walden. Walden Schmidt. Well, it's 
Nice to meet you, Walden Schmidt. Having a billionaire in the cast essentially allowed the writers to do whatever they wanted, which only worsened writing that already wasn't exactly Emmy-worthy. What if I hired you to play the role of my girlfriend? You think I'm a hooker? The performance was undoubtedly charming, but the cast's chemistry changed dramatically, and backstage drama continued to snowball until the show eventually ended after 12 seasons. Number 5. Nikki and Paolo Lost Depending on who you ask, Lost jumped the shark anywhere between, well, any episode really. Things don't stay buried on this island. The characters of Nikki and Paolo are particularly notorious among fans, however, for being generally annoying and dislikable. Nikki's dead. Now's Nikki. Apparently, they'd been on the island the entire time, but only started interacting with the main characters in the third season. You're not gonna fall. What? You want me to die? Come on, let's keep going. They were meant to start off awful so they could be redeemed later, but the writers may have gone a little too hard in the beginning. Audiences hated them so much that their planned storyline was scrapped, and they were killed off in a satisfyingly brutal fashion that felt like pure fan service by being buried alive. Number 4. The Elsa Reveal – Once Upon a Time Disney's Frozen was the breakout hit of 2013. Disney also happens to own ABC, which broadcasts Once Upon a Time. You won't get away with this. The season 3 finale ended with a divisive twist. Elsa, the movie's protagonist, emerged from an urn, ushering in a Frozen storyline for the fourth season. This was a strange move, since a 2013 movie isn't necessarily the kind of story that the series has traditionally incorporated. To the show's credit, they did work in elements of Hans Christian Andersen's original fairy tale, upon which Frozen was very loosely based. Still though, the cliffhanger felt desperate, an obvious attempt to get more viewers, by cashing in on the popularity of the animated hit. Cole never bothered me anyway. Number 3. Vaughn Isn't Vaughn – Alias for a time, J.J. Abrams' alias was one of the best things to be seen on TV. Unfortunately, they just couldn't keep the momentum up into its final few seasons. I love you, Sid. That's why I need to tell you something. Just so there's no secrets between us. After delivering a thrilling season finale, the fourth season came to a close with a pretty major twist. Michael Vaughn isn't who he's been saying he is. Well, for starters, my name isn't Michael Vaughn. Okay, this could maybe be interesting. Nope, no it wasn't. The following season unraveled this convoluted twist that felt half-baked and lacked any real direction, giving fans little reason to care. A fake-out death and ultimate cancellation made a mess of this once acclaimed drama's final season. I had this fear I'd never see you again. Silly, huh? Maybe a little. Number 2. Poof! The Fairly Odd Parents. The Fairly Odd Parents had a charming cast that worked well off of each other, which is why it's somewhat baffling that the series decided to bring in this entirely unnecessary character. Well, Poof, it's you and me, and this is a great opportunity for your big bro to teach you the finer things in life. Poof is the child of Cosmo and Wanda, and he really doesn't serve much purpose other than to generate conflict with his lack of magic knowledge. Can this get any more dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to stop talking to that kid. <laughs> By this point in the series, the apparent dumbing down of Cosmo's character already had that angle more than covered. Poof! Daddy's home and I brought you some leftovers! Ow! 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 It was only the first of several flat additions to the cast. We're looking at you, Sparky. All of which made a once wonderful children's comedy into a bloated shadow of what it once was. Please give it up for the new gal! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Why do you need to negate everything? Step one, you say we need to talk. He walks, you say sit down, it's just the talk. Number one, Brian's death, Family Guy. Well, I guess that's it. This is like the end of an era. After 12 seasons, Family Guy made the shocking move of killing off the family dog, Brian. It was a surprisingly poignant moment that could have been a bold narrative choice that challenged the writers. 
Instead, Brian was resurrected only two episodes later. Nobody wanted to see Brian get killed off, but they certainly didn't want to be emotionally manipulated for ratings either. Brian, look out! What the hell? You're alive, my friend! It was a move that reeked of desperation for a show that many felt had already been declining in quality for some time. What's worse is that it was an incredibly transparent stunt. Maybe it's time to swap out the term jumping the shark for killing the dog. You know, a lot of other families would have just gotten a different dog and moved on. Oh, oh, we, we, could, we could never do something like that, Brian. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.